Hello, everybody. Welcome to AI, the future of us. This is a podcast style video series that explores the ways in which AI is shaping our future and how we can prepare ourselves for the changes that lie ahead. I'm your host, Priyanka Rigaria, and today we are joined by Paige Bailey, who is a product lead for generative AI models at Google. Thank you for being here, Paige. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Amazing. Well, let's dive right in. I am so excited to uh, just explain our viewers today your background and your expertise in AI. I've been watching you for quite some time, but um, I think I think you should, we should go through an introduction. Absolutely. So uh, I've been doing AI for quite a while, back before it was cool. Um, I started off as a machine learning engineer and a data scientist. I was doing that for a bit over a decade and then transitioned um, to developer advocacy and product just a few years ago. Um, I'm a boomerang back to Alphabet, um, so I'm currently working within Google Research, um, helping bring generative models to all of the product surfaces that we have in Alphabet, particularly with a focus on machine learning for software development. Um, and uh, while I was gone from Alphabet during the pandemic, I worked at GitHub um, as, as one of their product leads for machine learning and for ML ops. Um, so it's uh, really exciting to see how the industry has changed, especially in the last couple of years. Um, and I'm really jazzed to talk to you, too, about some of the upcoming things that we've been working on together to get released out to users from Google. That is amazing. So with that background, it definitely leads me into the impact of AI on developers and development in general. What are your thoughts about that? Absolutely. So, so the software development field, it feels like every day there's a new startup being created for ML for code generation or ML for code explanation. Um, lots of these kind of inner loop developer activities. And when I say inner loop, I mean uh, kind of the process of building software within your IDE. Um, but really, uh, the most exciting things to me are, are what happens after the software has been shipped um, and you can start asking interesting questions about how do I make this deployment more efficient? How do I make this code more concise? How do I migrate from one API or one framework to another? Um, so I think those are the, or they always were the most tedious bits for me about doing software development and, and sort of maintaining systems over time. Um, and I'm really jazzed in particular about the potential for AI to take away those more mundane activities and to make it so that we can all focus on kind of the fun part of the job, which is asking questions, creating things, and then using using code to solve problems. Yeah, and just becoming a lot more productive in the process, yes. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so if you can think of examples of like effective use cases of AI for developers, what would one, two, three examples be? Sure. So at Google, we've been thinking about this for quite some time. Like we have uh, an internal system such that all of our code is hosted in a monorepo. And we also have telemetry baked into our entire software development process. So we understand how engineers are working together to, to discuss code, to write code, going through this code review process. And all of that is really magical training data for this entire end to end life cycle. So things that we've been able to do internally um, include things like you might have seen, uh, you know, coming from GitHub Copilot or some of the other tools um, around really nice code completion. So being able to do both single line and then uh, multi-line code completions that are really contextualized and um, sort of using retrieval techniques as well. So it's uh, hyper optimized for whatever file or whatever repo you're working in. Um, so as you're authoring code, that makes it uh, that makes you much more efficient, much more productive. We've also started um, applying machine learning to code review processes. Um, so as uh, you know, you could imagine um, if a reviewer uh, you know requests a change, automatically being able to generate code to support that change. Um, and then there's another aspect uh, that there was a paper released recently from the Learning to Perf team where you can identify um, you know, bits of code that aren't necessarily as efficient as they could be, um, and being able to kind of at scale apply those changes um, and save a lot of money in the process, 
right? Like, so, so if you uh, imagine all of Google's data centers and all of the C++ code running in Google's data centers, um, if you're capable of, of finding just one small kind of change um, that would impact, you know, processes running across multiple, multiple systems, um, then, uh, then you can end up saving hundreds of thousands of GCUs, um, which are, uh, you know, we refer to them as Google compute units internally, but you can, you can really just think about it in, in terms of the order of millions or billions of dollars of savings per year across Google's entire fleet. Um, so those are, those are three different categories, both writing code, this process of reviewing code and collaborating with your peers, and then also kind of after the code has been shipped, how do you make it much more efficient and performant? The, the one thing that also sticks out to me from the cloud side of things, me being like developing for the cloud and, and building applications in the cloud, um, as a developer in cloud, uh, being able to ask uh, code, uh, code samples for yes. uh, Google Cloud specific use cases, that would be something that I am really looking forward to. Absolutely, like being able to uh, being able to get again these these kind of context aware recommendations is really huge, um, because you know many of these tools I think are are trained on uh, you know publicly available source code that may or may not be fit for purpose for the kinds of production work that you need to do, um, and if you can get recommendations that are hyper optimized with either the latest APIs or um, you know, the, the kinds of APIs that might be beneficial for working on GCP, um, that would be, that would be very, very powerful. All right. So looking ahead for developers and AI, just in general, uh, what do you believe is the most exciting potential, um, applications of AI or even things that, um, that are coming out from Google, given you're on the research side and the model building side, I'm excited to learn a little more about uh, about what's coming, what to look out for, and what's already there that we maybe haven't uh, looked deeper into. Yeah, so so that's a great question. I think that you know no one would no one would challenge the statement that in the last year it feels like things are increasing exponentially um, in terms of the in terms of the capabilities that are supported by these generative models. I think that right now we're very reliant on language models and increasingly we're going to be focused more on, on multimodal models. Um, so, you know, being able to do things like drawing a picture of what you would want a website to be and then automatically having it, uh, automatically having it created for you. Um, I think another thing that I'm, I'm really passionate about myself is tool use. Um, and also being able to to have these uh, kind of agents navigate websites. Um, so you could imagine going on Zillow.com um, saying, help me find a two bedroom, two bathroom house within Palo Alto, within this budget. Um, and also please make sure that it has a lot of very sunny windows. Um, and uh, and then just through looking at kind of the the information in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript on the website, um, a little agent is able to self navigate towards uh, towards a subset of the Zillow properties that meet those requirements, um, which would require it to understand not just code to generate code to understand natural language queries, to decompose them into steps, and then also to be able to look at images of the properties and like see those characteristics. Um, so I think I think that's that's really interesting in, in terms of applications. That is such um, a great example. And it applies to so many other things as well, like retail yeah. and like searching yes. a product. It's so hard. I, yeah. I have stopped shopping at this point because it's just so hard to, yeah. to find a thing that I would like because uh, it takes yeah. hours and I'm not a patient person. So it's like being able to just type something like that. Um, and I, I know Lens yeah. does that today, which I actually use the Lens uh, Google Fo inside Google Photos when you click on the Lens button. I use that feature quite a bit because I do yep. come across pictures where it's like, oh, where did you get that code from, right? And exactly. and then and then it just points you to at least similar things or if not the exact same thing that you can buy. So there are some things that already exist and some uh, amazing use cases that you just mentioned that uh, would be so cool and would be uh, so efficient when it comes to like saving our time and just getting us to the answers faster. Absolutely. Okay. Anything else you would like to add before we wrap it up? 
I uh, so one thing that I would like to that I would like to to mention is that we're we're currently working on um, a variety of ML for software development features that will be uh, you know available to folks externally. One of which is introducing code support into Bard. Um, so if, if folks haven't tried it out yet. Um, there's also uh, the ability in BARD not only to generate natural language, but also to generate source code with syntax highlighting. Um, we're adding support for exporting to Colab um, in addition to a number of other developer surfaces. So if you generate Python code, you can click a button and it'll generate a Colab notebook for you that you can run. And then BARD will also help you debug, um, which is kind of cool. And then one thing, you know, we were talking a little bit about the training data that's used for these models um, and how often, you know, we have these, these properties that generate code, but then they don't necessarily tell you where it came from. Um, yeah. And, you know, you and I are both really active in the open source communities. Um, it, it can mean a lot to, to say like, hey, you know, this, this snippet of code that was generated, um, it's very similar to code that's in this repo with this license. Um, so making sure that the appropriate authors are, are recognized. And then also as a user, like if I want to do, if I run a, want to write a function to do foobarb as, um, and somebody has already implemented it, uh, it's much, much cooler to be able to go to that repo, you know, pip install whatever library is there, um, and then just use that instead of having to implement and maintain something myself. Um, so, so I think uh, those are those are just a couple of things that people might want to watch out for. Um, go and try themselves, and then send us feedback um, because that's the only way we get better. That is so cool. And I ended up trying um, trying to deploy a cloud run application on uh, with sample code that Bard yes. suggested uh, using Python, and uh, um, it did a great job. So, um, you know, I, I'll be continuing to try on features like that awesome. with, uh, with uh, you know, cloud users and, and how cloud architects can and developers can, can utilize Bard as well. Very, uh, right. very cool. With Excellent. That, and and we will never have to write regular expressions again. Like, oh that my is God. the dream. Yeah. <laughs> I was always like, okay, oh my God, regular expressions run away. <laughs> yes, exactly. That was me. So now I'm so relieved that at least there's somebody who can write regular expressions and that's not me. <laughs> awesome. Um, cool. Well, thank you so much. It was so nice having you. It was great being here. Thank you for, thank you for inviting me. And I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, to seeing these features roll out. Amazing. It's been incredible, insightful to hear all of your thoughts. And we look forward to seeing how AI will continue to shape the world around us, especially in the developer space, because you and I are both excited about that. Thank you. Yep, yep. Bye.